Hi, my name is Gina Kim and welcome to another quick video where I use watercolor, some simple art supplies, and a stencil to create a bold nautical piece with lots of texture. My hope is that it'll stir your creativity, maybe you'll learn something new, and for me, I know I need to use up some scrapbooking supplies I've been holding on to, so let's get started. To make a less streaky watercolor background, I often use a foam brush to pre-wet the paper. But before I did that, noticed it was marked with random crayon scribbles. This is optional, but I like the resist effect it makes, as you'll see. Next, paint with watercolors that you love. Anything bright and um, colors that make you happy. And let those pigments blend into each other as you cover the whole page. And while the paint is still damp, Sprinkle salt for a star-like texture and rubbing alcohol for a beautiful ring-like texture. Once your first layer is dried, it'll look something like this. A very versatile watercolor background with many uses. I see colors that are abstract in formation, lots of good energy and motion here. Let's add a diagonal water line about two-thirds up with the paintbrush dipped in white gouache. As that is drying, I like to glaze a mixture of black and blue watercolor. Glazing is simply adding color on top of dried color, and we need to darken this painting a bit so that both the stars and the stencil will pop. Once everything is dried, let's get some more white gouache paint, and this is a no-brainer here. We're just sprinkling on some white dots that mimic the stars, and I'm highlighting some of the wave crest, accentuating, um, making some lines crisp along the wave. Today's stencil I'm using, and there are many out there, um, is made by Stencil Girl Products. It's this beautiful detailed coral. And just like my previous stencil art journaling video, I apply a thin coat of modeling paste with a pellet knife. Now there are many brands of dimensional mediums, and here I'm using Golden's Light Molding Paste, but you can use their regular kind, or their fiber paste. They also have watercolor dimensional ground and cold press ground. And on my blog, I'll be sure to list some other companies like Ranger and Faber-Castell. Just be sure the medium dries to a gritty, porous white texture, and not glossy, but again, white and toothy, so that it can really grab onto color. Instead of watercolor paint, I'm gonna use these Scholastic oil pastels that had some neon colors in them. And look how it just grabs onto the oil pastel. Just beautiful and vibrant and incredibly, it gives you that wow factor, right? So I cut out the coral shape um, from that separate sheet of paper. And here's a trick that I use in colorizing this dimensional raised surface. Flatten out the edge of your water, sorry, your pastel, so that you are mostly covering the top portion and not getting oil pastel between the crevices. But, and if you get some oil pastel between the crevices, so what? Um, but here I'm just really being careful about it. I just wanna hit those, those topped raised surface. And then we are going to, this is the showstopper, right? I mean, that's where the eye gravitates to. So here I sped up the gluing process because I didn't want to make anyone snore. And I'm just gonna place my stencil cut out and then use, I don't know, tracing paper and a, and a brayer. I just wanna make sure that everything has some good contact with that adhesive. And oil pastels take about a week to cure. Um, colors will still come off of it probably weeks later. Just make sure that you're kind of brushing off any residual and blotting off any crumbs of pastel. And here I have something, a scrapbooking item. It's a clear transparency with some gold foil in them. And I thought, why don't we cover some of that oil pastel so it doesn't smear everywhere it goes? 
And surely you can use plain acetate or a transparency film like Duralar, but I'm using transparency sheets made by Bella Boulevard. And then double-sided sticky tape to anchor just the corners like you see here. I plan on sewing that corner right there. And now I'm gonna take this art journal page to the sewing machine. And I'm just going to simply stitch like the stalk of the coral, maybe about two inches on the bottom and two inches on top, just so that that transparency layer doesn't go anywhere. And I also sewed uh, with white thread, um, like along the water line, as you can see from the back. So there you have it, a very simple and quick way to incorporate oil pastels and dimensional texture to your watercolor paintings. It's really freeing to take separate parts and then bring them all together without the stress of drawing first. Hopefully this has sparked a fresh new way to use your supplies. My blog is GinaLeeKim.com and have a great day.